What's up, everybody? Dan Tortora here with you today, and uh, very excited to be here with you as we are bringing you a new episode of Reese's Pieces. Uh, Reese's Pieces, as you know, is an extension of Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. So Wake Up Call is every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time. It airs on right here on Facebook, where you are right now, on Facebook Live, on Facebook.com backslash LiveNowDT, on YouTube.com backslash WakeUpCallDT, as well as on MixLR.com backslash uh, WakeUpCallDT and on WakeUpCallDT.com. So uh, Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time, you're watching and listening to Wake Up Call. And an extension of that is Reese's Pieces, which is here for you every other Monday at 11.30. This Monday, as we're in episode five. So we're looking to get Tammy on here in just a second so we could get things started. There she is. You better now? I'm, I'm good now. Okay, we're good. So we got Tammy Reese here with us. It is Reese's Pieces. This is episode five. And what we realized from episode four is uh, we had set out to do top five horror, top five rom-com, and top, ten a- top five action. And our conversation with action and horror was so vast and so deep, we didn't get to rom-coms, which gave us the opportunity to get to top ten, because I was telling you that I couldn't find a top five romantic comedies because I have too many. So today we are here to talk about the top ten, not top five, top this many romantic comedies and mob gangster movies. How excited are you for this, Tammy? I am so excited because they're two of my favorite, you know, romantic comedies is my favorite genre right there with horror, but just, you know, gangster movies or mafia movies, anything to do with the mafia, I absolutely love, loves. Any movie that's on, it just plays right through. So really excited today. And it's going to be great stuff. And before we get into that, as you know, Tammy's going into her third, third season as the Rhode Island Rams head coach for the women's basketball team. You guys have uh, seemingly, I mean, there's, there's positives and negatives with the transfer portal, but you all have seemed to have some fun with it here and you've gotten to make a few announcements. So what can you tell us about year three with the Rams? Well, we're really excited um, with year three. Obviously, we return um, – our core players back. We lost a couple to the portal that were looking for more playing time or different homes and, and it was mutual and it's a good thing. Um, it opened up a lot of scholarships, but you know, we return our co-player of the year who decided against going pro. So she's coming back, um, Emmanuel Tahan, along with MP Faposi from Syracuse. She's coming back for her fifth year and also our, our starting two, two guards coming back. So our core um, players as well as freshmen, first team Dolly Cairns is coming back. So we had our core come back and then we had an absolutely ridiculous transfer portal signees. Um, we got uh, Desiree Elmore, who was at Syracuse, who started with, with me at Syracuse. She signed with us from Seton Hall. She's a first team all Big East. And when I say this kid can play, she gave it yeah. to UConn. I mean, to be first team all Big East with DePaul, Marquette, UConn, it's no joke. Um, so for us, that kind of led our, our transfer portal. We signed the point guard, the fifth-year grad transfer from Providence, again, Big East player, to, to uh, come down. And then we had two huge signees, one from NC State, Rebecca Demeke, and then our last one, 6'5 post from Texas A&M, which is huge for us. Um, we haven't had size since my first year, and that's um, Anna Dramain. So with those four signees, with our core coming back, and then we haven't even announced our overseas kids yet that we've signed, we've held off. Um, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll be bringing in, I believe, eight or nine new players. And so, and they're talented. And so I couldn't be any more excited. Like our, I, I've never had this kind of depth where we could play, you know, 10, 11, 12 deep and not have any fall off. Um, it's really, really exciting. So we'll get to play the style I want to play, which is Fast and Furious. And the talent level is just going to be ridiculous. So if people thought last year um, was a good year, they're going to be really excited to watch us play this year. So I, I'm, I can't wait to get these kids here for summer. You know, in, in, in the transfer portal, I mean, we've seen so much. I mean, you being at Syracuse a couple of years ago, 
12 players left Syracuse. I mean, the entire team pretty much. Uh, Q told me that he was anticipating six because they were upperclassmen and all that. But, I mean, having been at Syracuse, what can you say about that? Because I, I feel like Q's done so many amazing good things that have been underplayed. And then this happens and everybody wants to talk about it. My question to him on the show a, a couple of weeks ago was, you know, you put a top eight class, a top 11, top 11 coming in this year, top 15. Nobody talks about it, top 12. But when the, when the portal opens and this happens, everybody wants to know what's going on. So I guess that's the, that's the, the art of social media and coaching and whatnot. But what, what can you say about Q? Because you came from his coaching tree. Well, I, you know, I think Q is, an, he's a very dynamic man. He's, he's an amazing recruiter. Um, you know, as an assistant coach, you set the table for your head coach. You really go out, you find the talent, and then you, you just, all he has to do is, is roll in after your evaluations. He'll see, does he like it? And then he, he's a great closer, very dynamic man. Um, and he's done an unbelievable job building that program. There's been no one more successful in Syracuse than Quentin Hillsman. Um, let's be honest, let's be real. He's taken the program to, to all new heights. So, you know, that should never be downplayed just because your men's basketball team is pretty incredible um, with a pretty uh, Hall of Fame coach. And so, you know, it's obvious what Q has accomplished there and no one can take that from him. I think now with the way our game is, is kind of transpiring, is you you not only have to now go out and sign kids but you have to re-recruit your kids every day and we talk about this dan all the time about relationships and this is also your assistant coaches that's why you know i i go out and get people who are relationship coaches i don't care about your x and o's i don't care we can teach that but are you great relationship communicators? Do you invest in your kids every day? Because you've got to now recruit your kids. And I always say this, and I, I said this to my staff, once we, we had our class together and we've got our 15 kids now, right? I yeah. said, I don't care about recruiting this summer. Yes, we're going out, but I want to focus on the kids coming in. You have, you owe them that. You sign these kids. You can't just sign them, get them on campus, and now disappear. Oh, now we're going recruiting again. So I put a prime emphasis on taking care of my kids. These are my kids. They committed to me, not the future. I know we all get caught up in the next, the next, but you really have to re-recruit your kids every day and build those bonds um, and make sure they're happy um, and getting what they need, not just what you need. And so it's a give and take. And that's my emphasis last year and this year is invest in your kids because when they sign that that new law the ncaa says you can just leave and not sit your kids better have a sense of loyalty to you they have to be happy they have to know you love them and invest in them it's not just about playing time and numbers it's not to the average fan the kids are looking for so much more than that overall happiness you want to be somewhere when you're happy whether it's a marriage you're dating your job these kids are no different they're not going to stay at a place that they're not happy and so you have to invest in that and building those relationships and really being invested all your coaches that that is is a something that has to change at schools you know you'll have a couple kids leave that's inevitable because they want to yeah. find playing time. Not all, you can't play, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15, those kids. So they may not stay their freshman year. They may jet because they want to find that playing time. And that's understandable. But for me, I can't have my core players leave. I cannot have Emmanuel Tahan go, I'm going to go to this school my fifth year because no, I got to keep her. I got to retain her. That's my star, that's my player of the year. And so that's kind of how we focused our, our efforts this year is, and, and we're that person, I, Dan, me and you talk, I'm a relationship person. It's what I was best yeah. at as a, an assistant. And it's, it, I've never lost that as a head coach. I don't care how many duties I have, my kids are gonna know me. They're gonna know how I feel about them and they're gonna get to know me. And so that, that's really a key component now for, for us is re-recruit your own team, man. 
relationships. You know, and, and it is, it's, it's crucial. Like you said, it's all about relationships. It's how you treat people. That is what the difference maker is in, in anything in life is about relationships. And speaking of relationships, it's time, time to get into the top 10 romantic comedies. Rom, coming it up. We're going from 10 to one. And as always, Tammy will go first. I will go second. We'll go 10, which is the one that just made our top 10, all the way to our favorite, which is number one. Tammy, bring me into the movie conversation that we are about to have that is gonna be timeless, one for the ages. I'm excited, so give me number 10. All right, first I gotta, there's a little disclaimer here. Okay. There's a lot of um, people say comedy, rom-com. There are two different things for me. So there's a lot of rom kind of comedies that get classified as a rom-com, which I would put them in the comedy category. So for example, Clueless, that for me is a comedy. That, that's a coming of eight, that's a comedy. It's not so much a rom-com for me or else Clueless would be in my top five. Um, okay. Just Friends, another one with Ryan Reynolds. It, it, it's so much comedy that there's not a true sense of romance there. It's more of a comedy. So that's my first disclaimer is I have a couple forgetting Sarah Marshall. I have a couple that would be in there, but I classify them as boomerang. They're, they're comedies for me. So with that being said, my number 10 is two of my favorite actor, one of my favorite actors, actresses, they're older. And it was great to see a rom-com with two older people getting great roles, especially for a woman. So my number 10 comes in, Jack Nicholson, Diane Keaton, something's got to get. Okay. Yeah. And, and I, I felt like I knew where you were going with this, but uh, something's got to give your number 10. <clears throat> my, my number 10 is a woman that many people know, but a man that I feel like is kind of forgotten. He was in Red Dragon, which was like a prequel to The Silence of the Lambs. But this has got to be my number 10, because if it's on television, I will watch it. It is a beautiful movie. It is such a wonderful story. It's the story of, of a cleaning lady. It's the story of someone who kind of threw a lie and threw some things falls into stuff. And it is a, it's, it's a story that's not told that much. I don't know if it's ever been told beyond this, is Made in Manhattan with Jennifer Lopez. Very nice. Good Good movie. Um, he's not necessarily my favorite actor. I love yeah. Jennifer. I love J Lo in in rom coms, but I'm glad you made J Lo in your top ten. So She's good for you for not knowing <laughs> rom coms. I'm glad she made your top ten. Um, for me, not knowing rom coms. You you said it's not your your your. No, I I love them. I just I I like I differently like I. There's movies that made my top 10 that had to uh, because there's a lot, okay. There's comedies, strict comedies, like you said. There's strict comedies and then there's the things that are really, really funny, but there's love. I had to find a true love story come through it in order for me to argue it. There's a couple that you're gonna make me argue, but I'm okay with it. <laughs> All right. The um, number nine, I, I have a, a tie. Okay. The first one is 80s throwback. Um, love it on so many levels because it goes from wrong side of the tracks, has an infatuation with most popular girl, um, but has a best friend that secretly loves him and just great characters and true 80s and some of the best rom-coms were in the 80s. I don't know if you've seen this one, but it's some kind of wonderful with Eric Stoltz. Okay. Okay. Um, so one of my favorites, and then it ties with um, a classic that um, you had me at. Hello, is Jerry, Jerry Maguire. Yeah, and you know, and, and Jerry Maguire. It's funny because yesterday on the plane when I was coming back from Florida, I watched Edge of Tomorrow with with Tom Cruise and. It's a crazy movie about aliens and about resetting the day. And it's kind of like, it's kind of like Groundhog Day meets Aliens, End of the World. It's, it's insane, but 
Funny that you mention him. I went back to an oldie but goodie that I think is on a lot of people's lists. And I think you'll be proud of me for this one, Tammy. My number nine <laughs> is a movie that frustrated me at times, upset me because it's not perfect. But anybody that knows love knows that love is not perfect. And that there are many roads that love will take. And there are many ups and downs. So this movie frustrated me because it reminded me of reality. And I said, well, Dan, you can't keep it off the list because it being real is what makes it special when Harry met Sally. Yeah. Um, you know, we have a lot in common. Mine will go one much farther up the list because um, this is my all, it, it's a classic. It, it is a absolute, and Billy Crystal doesn't come off as the best leading rom-com man you'd think the attraction, but the chemistry between those two, and not only those two, but their friend, the couple, it just was an amazing movie on so many levels from an acting standpoint, from chemistry. So great, good, good choice. You, it made your top 10 very nice. Um, great. My number eight is a tie um, and it's the same leading man. So I couldn't choose, and he's one of my favorite actors from a very young age when he first made his first cameo in 16 Candles. And it's a John Cusack doozy. So it's a double. My first one is Say Anything. Lloyd Doppler, um, classic. Um, In Your Eyes, Peter Gabriel, love song. Um, so Say Anything. And then it comes in a little bit later in his career, based set in New York City, and it is Serendipity. Um, and uh, I am a huge John Cusack fan, but... Uh, you know, I love the storyline and serendipity. So I give him his shout out to to two of my favorite rom coms from from uh, John Cusack. The Boombox Outside the Window and Serendipity, a movie that was given to me by a friend, and she said, "I just need you to watch this because someday you're gonna meet your person, and it's gonna hit you." that it was serendipity it was very serendipitous so yes that not it didn't make my list and it's probably arguably somewhere within eight to ten as as a tie but my number eight is a movie that i don't know if a lot of people have seen i stumbled upon it i bought the dvd i'm a big ryan reynolds fan it is not the proposal that one is up my list but this is a story that I thought was so unique. Again, I like originality in movies. I love to screenwrite and I would love to get into acting more. So as a screenwriter, I realized that originality is something you don't see a lot. This story is a story about a man talking to his daughter about her mother. And there's three different women yes. that he along the way. And she's trying to figure out which one is her mom and which one he truly loves. Definitely Maybe is my number eight. Great, and again, Ryan Reynolds is, someone asked, you know, who would you marry? I have a tie between two <laughs> men, one being Adam Sandler and the other one being Ryan Reynolds. Um, Mark Wahlberg's distant third. Um, but I love, and again, that was such a cute movie. So well done, so well written. Good choice, very good choice. I like that. My, my, uh, if, if she was available, if what it, mine has been forever and I knew her when she was a rapper, I think I would have so much fun with Queen Latifah. Yeah, that <laughs> is, yes, you would. And she can hoop too, Dan, just so you know. Yeah, Queen Latifah can hoop. The thing is I feel like the Queen and I, we'd be hooping, we'd be rapping, we'd be having, I just, I don't know, there's something about Queen Latifah. I just, I, I feel, I feel her vibe. She's an awesome, she seems like an awesome person, awesome yes. lady. Um, my number seven. Um, it, and I pay homage, she just passed recently, um, the great Olympia Dukakis, um, one of my favorite actresses. And I remember watching this movie when I was young and it just oozed love um, in so many different directions with so many couples. And again, some of the best actresses and actors in, in this movie. My number seven comes in it was hard for me to put it this low because I love me some share. Um, is Moonstruck. And what is it again? What's that? What, what, what's the name of it again? Moonstruck. 
Moonstruck. So Moonstruck, Cher makes the list. So Cher is, is being represented by you. And, and I believe she won an Oscar for this role. So um, yeah. pretty, pretty impressive um, acting chops for, for Cher. So she makes my list. No, and I, and I think that that is, I think that's great. My number seven is a more recent movie with one of my favorite rom-com and my number one crush of all time, Jennifer Aniston. And that movie is with my boy Adam Sandler as well. It's a more recent one. And I think it's like Brooklyn Decker's only movie. Yes. <laughs> but the movie, just go with it. I, I just, I love, I love this story. What I love, and, and you'll see it in this, and you'll see it in another one of my picks that's coming up. It's the story of the tiptoe down the hallway and go to their door and go to knock, but you don't and wonder if they're there. There's two movies that does that to me. And I find that to be the true romantic comedy, the true love of I'm coming to you and I want to see you. And the person is thinking they don't care. They're not there. They're not on the same level as me. And they're actually standing right outside their door. So just go with it for its comedy for, um, I forget, I forget his last name, but uh, I think it's uh, Nick, the, the other comedian, uh, Dolph in the movie. And uh, for everything in this movie, it's, it's so funny. It's great. And I actually just did this uh, recently where I was like, the stash man. So <laughs> just, just go with it has to be my number seven. Um, any Adam Sandler movie, I just told you, he's, he's one of my boy crushes. I absolutely love him and adore him. And I love Jennifer Aniston. Um, anything she does. So great. I just watched it the other day too, the coconut scene with Nicole Kidman and Dave Matthews. Great classic. Yeah. Great, great, great movie. Um, my number six is an homage way back. Um, and uh, I think it was the first movie I watched where a man dressed in drag and then I ended up making a movie way down the, the line when another man dressed in drag and, and actually played basketball. But for me, this movie, again, um, I, I love me some Dustin Hoffman and Jessica Lange. Jessica Lange growing up, when I saw her in King Kong, um, yeah. she became one of my favorite actresses. And so for me, number six, um, such a different spin um, on falling in love and again um, was Tootsie uh, for me. A great soundtrack. Um, but again, just better acting, just unbelievable acting. And it was such a cute movie. So for me, my number six is Tootsie. You reminded me of a movie I forgot about, which will be one of my honorable mentions is The Birdcage. I love The Birdcage. I love Nathan Lane and Robin Williams is one of my favorites ever, if not my favorite. So The Birdcage, such a good movie. The beginning of it, as you're seeing everybody like in drag and do, doing their show and you keep going up this like staircase and you hear this oh for heavens and it's, <laughs> and, it's and he refuses to go out and uh just a great movie so you reminded me of the birdcage which i forgot on my list which 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 is uh to to nathan and to robin please understand to everybody in that movie uh you are you are uh that was my fault and you're right in here i would I would put them in here as well. Uh, number six is one that I know that women across the world will be upset with me. They'll be happy with me. I included it. They'll be upset it's not higher. And, and many of them will have it as number one. But I can't do it because Kate Upton pisses me off too much in this movie. And I think, no, it's Kate Hudson. Pardon me. Kate Hudson pisses me off too much in this movie. So I will tell you that uh, I like the movie. But Matthew McConaughey, as well as 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 uh, as as Miss as Miss Kate, there are not my favorites. And this movie, again, frustrating because it's true. Frustrating because she makes it so difficult. And I understand it's for an article at one point, but then she just kind of shows that she's not ready to be in love. And he fights for her. He eventually finds a way to her heart. And so for the comedy of this, the interesting reality of this, and the media and journalism of all this that I live in, the nasty side, number six, how to lose a guy in 10 days. 
again, that makes my, you've named a lot of movies that make my honorable mention. Um, I love the movie, but like in, you know, 10 years or 15 years, I'm like, like Moonstruck or Tootsie. If it's on, I, I may watch it, but like, just go with it. How to Lose a Guy, Wedding Planner. Um, some of the ones you're mentioning, they're, they're definitely Pretty Woman. They're definitely on my, my honorable mention. Um, but I too, there was something about her character that they both, the evilness of vindictiveness at times kind of took away from, even though it was funny, you know, I don't know if you get back together after that. I just don't know. Um, so yeah. same, I, I've got that same feeling with that movie, but, uh, but I definitely love me some Matthew McConaughey. So uh, he was in a lot of good rom-coms. So good choice. I like that. Um, number five for me is one of my best rom-com couples of all time. Um, the chemistry between these two is irreplaceable. And she is my rom-com rom -com queen over Julia Roberts, over um, Sandra Bullock, over uh, anyone you can mention. And, and in the 80s and early 90s, she was the one. And so for me, my number five and probably my favorite actor of all time, I, in any movie he, he's in, number five, You've Got Mail. Okay. Meg, Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks. Yeah, there's, there's nothing like, there's nothing like a Tom Hanks movie. And he will actually show up in my mob and gangster list for a movie that I think people have forgotten and may not have seen. Me but too. But it's a movie to this day. I have not watched. I own it. I watched it. And I have refused. I'm probably going to watch it now that I'm talking about it. But I refused to watch it for so many years because the ending so breaks sad. my heart. So, but Tom Hanks, you rest assured you are alive in today's broadcast of Reese's Pieces for me. My number five, I'll probably have to argue. My number five and number four both have the movie or the name Wedding in the title. My number five is a movie that I forgot about when I was making my list. I put it up above uh, How to Lose a Guy and Just Go With It. And that is because he's one of my favorite comedians. A wonderful woman from Africa that was my Uber driver in Charlotte told me that I am her caramel Kevin Hart when I get really tanned. And I said, I'm going to take that and I'm going to use that forever. That might be the best nickname ever. Uh, the, this movie has Josh Gad in it, which people know as Olaf from Frozen. I love this movie because it's about weddings. It's about love. It's about finding it. It's about a man impersonating a priest. It is about having code to talk to each other. It is about finding real true friendships and realizing that in life, sometimes you get exactly what you need when you think you have what you want. So this movie, and I want to say that again, you get exactly what you need when you think you're going after what you want. This movie's got to make it some of the funniest scenes of my life and the incredible, incredible hospital scene when the love of his life is the most unexpected and she shows up there and waits all night just to see him wake up and be okay. I have to give it up to my man, Kevin Hart, for The Wedding Ringer. Very nice. Good movie. Again, um, one of my favorite comedic actor actors. It, it's hard for me. Um, I don't, I don't know why, maybe because he's so funny. I can't invest in his love life. Like I, it, it just, he, I can't like truly think of him as a rom-com and, and invest in love with him, even though he's been in so many movies where he's had that relationship, but yeah. um, good choice, out of the box choice. I like that, very nice. It swung right in to make my note, cause it's, cause I will watch it a thousand, like I will get off the phone and go watch it right now. So like, it's one of those movies I can't help. And I do want to give an honorable mention to Think Like a Man and Think Like a Man too, because they did not make my list because I didn't think that there was a central love story. Yeah. But in The Wedding Ringer, there is a true, as much as we're focused on Kevin Hart, Josh Gad's evolution as a human being into a love story of really loving himself more than anything else. 
that is why it made my list. Yeah, good, good choice. Um, my number four, I just actually watched it yesterday. It was on and I kept it on. And I was never a huge fan of this guy. Like he was always in some great movies and he won me over. But from the first time I saw him in Four Weddings and a Funeral, and I'm like, okay, and, and, uh, and then I just, the more I watched him, but then he got with this girl and it's about a nobody, Joe Schmo, meeting the biggest, famous, most famous person in the world and just developing that relationship. And so for me, number four comes in and one of my favorite actresses of all time, um, probably in my top five, Julia Roberts and Hugh Grant and Notting Hill. Right. Notting Hill. You don't be mad at me. I've never seen. Now, oh God, come on, man. <laughs> you you must see this. And one of the most classic girl lines. I'm not a huge Grant fan. I think that's why. Yeah. Um, I'm not. I wasn't either until, you know, again, he grew on me. The more I saw him, I'm like, God, this guy just gets under your skin. Like, you don't want to like him. But in this movie, you absolutely love him. And the line that gets me every time is, I'm just a girl standing in front of a boy asking him to love her. Um, when he said, you know, your life is just too crazy for me. You're just too famous and I'm going to get hurt. You're going to leave me. Um, but just, yeah. again, Julia Roberts could be in so many of them, pretty, pretty woman alone. But it's so cliche for me, again, that it was, I couldn't put it in my top 10, even though it's a great movie. Um, but this one for her, their relationship was just so good. Um, made my, came in number four, which shocked me because I can't not watch it. Absolutely <laughs> love it. You got to see it, Dan. Come on now. All right. I'll watch it. You have my word. I started on my list. See, it's, it's on my list. It's start. It's good. very important. So my number four is a movie I quote all the time. It's a movie that I love. It's, um, what did Crystal say? I can't believe you, Dan, have not seen Notting Hill. Come on, Crystal. <laughs> so. <laughs> see, see, you'll get a girl, let alone, girls will be like, you haven't seen Notting Hill? So as soon as you start <laughs> dating a girl, she sees this, she's gonna make you watch Notting Hill. Yeah, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it for you. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna, yeah, anybody I end up with, I'm gonna be like, listen, I appreciate being in this room with you, but I did this for Dan. <laughs> so. <laughs> My number four, my number four, I quote it all the time. I feel like on a movie set, this man and I would riff off each other. I have running stream of consciousness, consciousness just like Vince Vaughn. And some of my favorite lines, and I just said this. I said it multiple times when I was in Disney. I said, sometimes you just have to uh, turn off the engines, cool the jets. And, uh, and I, I, love, I love so much about this movie when he puts syrup on everything, also me. And, and uh, I, I, I do, I quote this, I actually had somebody make me a painting when I was in college and I put it up on my wall and he actually drew me a, a picture. And, and my, my buddy Pat said, he goes, why would you put that on the wall? Like you're interested in women, why would you do that? And I looked at him and I said, this was a gift. I was like, and when a woman does it, I'll take it, I'll take it off my wall and keep it up. But before this movie came out, I actually said along the lines of this was a gift, which is what Vince also said when he took the painting. I love this movie so very much. And this movie made me loathe Bradley Cooper. And the only reason why I like him a little bit right now is because he's Rocket Raccoon. <laughs> Number four, I, I can't put it in my top three because I don't think it's the truest of the true, but I will watch this movie and I will crash a wedding someday. Wedding Crashers, I love you. The entire movie, I love everybody that worked on it. This is my number four. See, for me, that's a comedy because it is I, just I know, so hilarious. It is one of my favorite, and now when we talk pure comedies, that's one of my favorite movies of all time. Uh, from a comedy standpoint, it might be in my top five because it made me laugh out loud. And I am a huge Vince Vaughn um, fan. Same thing. His his delivery on his one-liners and his he's just the best. He is. And it's where I learned how to do my Christopher Walken impression. It's also one of the lines. You talk about lines. 
that's gonna interrupt. I want to make sure I got this uh, got this in the line when when she's reading uh, Rachel McAdams, also the first movie I saw her in, a beautiful woman, and she was reading her her cue cards and whatnot and going over them with him, and he said what he would say, and he would say the soul is is the realiz realization of one's counterpoint in another. And that line, and then when she's talking and she's not getting the laughs and Owen Wilson goes like this to her, like speak from your heart, uh, that and the tiptoe, the tiptoe to the, to the door and uh, me going through so many moments like that saying, is she on the other side of the door? Will she ever knock? Um, that whole, and the song that's there within that, I saw Sparks. I, um, I believe it's by Coldplay. So everything about that, there is so much romance within that. There's also the part where, <laughs> where Vince Vaughn looks at, at the, the, the redheaded actress and he says, you're crazy. And I dig it. Yeah. And he also says, Grandma, this is real life. You can't just shoot somebody <laughs> else. <laughs> and then when he kisses, when he says, I bring it in for the real thing, I say that all the time. He kisses the priest on the mouth. And then when he tells him, he goes, I told you that in confidence, that was a confession. <laughs> So everything about that movie just makes me want to hang out with those guys. So I got to, I, I got to stick by it. I'm See, when we it. do our, our comedy top 10, that will be in my top 10. Um, that, that's going to be my two or one. We'll yeah, that. that may be my two or one as well. I have a number one that will never be dethroned ever because um, it was just so classic when she did it. But great choice um again for me it's so much comedy because that's laugh out loud but there is romance in it and there's something yeah. sweet about it so good choice i love it um my number three could be fantasy but it is a true true love story um with again so many great actors and actresses in it um but and great comedy um, some of the best comedic performances you'll see. But my number three is a fantasy love story. Um, and that is The Princess Bride. Okay. And that's a movie that comes up all the time. When you hear women talk about movies of any genre, The Princess Bride finds itself in it. My number three is, now that we've reached our top three, these are the greats of the greats. My number one, I don't think will ever be moved. Like you just talked about your comedy. My number one would have to be moved by something new that would have to be original and just catch me. The ones I've seen lately have been well under par for a romantic comedy. So my number one has not changed in over a decade and it won't, I don't think. My number three though has moved up my list. And my grandmother used to fake pass out like Betty White did in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, and my grandmother was very much a golden girl. So I would say that this has to make it. Uh, Sandra Bullock, shout out to you. You are such a mean human in this movie. And, and Ryan Reynolds, you know, he didn't think he was gonna, but he did. It's one of those stories about how a circumstance becomes real life how you play something into it and it actually becomes love. I'll never forget uh, her coming out of the shower with the towel on and they see each other. And uh, I love Canada and, and Ryan Reynolds is from the Vancouver area. So being able to see it back there, I think is a very real thing to me. Uh, just a big fan of this movie and the fact that uh, he made her believe in love again. So the proposal is my number three. And again, great. Uh, I I don't know why I, I didn't. Any Ryan Reynolds could be in, but he it's just so comedic for me again and just so funny that I felt the relationship, but I didn't feel it. Like it was more comedy than love. So again, that's an, probably an honorable mention for me as well. Um, but any again anything with ryan reynolds is okay by me and again sandra bullock didn't make my list um but every one of her movies could have so all all of hers could be honorable mention for me but again for me that's pure comedy genius that was such a great movie um 
and anything Betty White's in, I love. So <laughs> very nice. Um, now my one and two have always been my one and two. They have never been displaced from the first time as I've gotten older, I've really grown to appreciate them more because they have stood the test of time. Um, and some days I feel number two at number one and number one at number two, but I will finish with this one. My number okay. two is my favorite couple of all time. Um, it's an homage to an older movie where they meet on the top of the Empire State Building. That there were kids involved. The sadness of, of his wife passing and never finding love again. And the, there was very serendipitous to this movie. Um, and the, the role characters in it, Rita Wilson, Tom Hanks' wife's in it, um, which is uh, Rosie O'Donnell's in it. And just um, all the cameos that were in it. But the love story between these two and how they ended up and how the kid kind of forced it to happen. For me, my number two, and again, my favorite rom-com duo of all time is uh, Sleepless in Seattle. Yeah, you know, and, and again, you know, like you said, having the characters that you had, the actors and actresses that you have in this movie, it's hard to not put. And I also find when I was trying to do this rom-com list that there's drum there's the there's the dramantic <laughs> or 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 the drama so to speak where there's those movies that like you feel like it's romantic but is it funny and it's very deep and so that's why some of these uh, didn't make my list because there was less comedy than i thought there was drama my number two is one that i watched since i was a kid i had a crush on a girl named alex mack on Nickelodeon in the secret life of Alex Mack. To this day, I don't know the name of the actress offhand because I only knew her as Alex Mack. She was a beautiful kind of tomboy character, but uh, just a beautiful girl. She could like go play basketball, then she could dress up. She was in this movie with one of my favorite actors, young actors who really doesn't age. And I think he's one of the most unsung actors, which would be Joseph Gordon-Levitt and this movie also featured my guy who broke down the heart of somebody that really didn't want to love anybody and uh, Heath Ledger was the one that was able to do this 10 things I hate about you I will watch it used to be on Fox family all the time and ABC family free form probably now if it's on television I can't help but watch it and the dad that puts on the pregnant belly and tells her that this is why she can't go out like the typical dad that was in every movie of the 80s and the 90s. So uh, 10 Things I Hate About You. And the dad that we need right now, actually. Uh, I, so definitely, outside of the fact that he was keeping his daughter from going to the college she wanted to and eventually changed his mind. Though. Yeah. But 10 Things I Hate About You has got to be on. That's one of my coming of age um, top 10 movies. Like when you think about that, like we, we, we talk about 16 Candles, you know, Fast Times all those different movies that is a great movie um not my favorite lead julia styles is just someone that just irks the out of me I, and i don't know why but in that movie because of heath ledger actually made me like her um and i think she was great for the part so pretty 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 great movie um nice very nice um and then my number one is just the the classic. I told you it was much higher on my list. Um, the quirkiness of this one, her her ability to be so aloof and line delivery. Um, and then uh, I was never a big fan of this guy as a romantic lead ever. I never thought I'd be even invested in it because he's he's just a comedian. He's not very handsome. He's not. But in this movie, um, Billy Crystal just steals your heart and um he is hilarious and you know bruno kirby and uh in the movie i absolutely loved who's no longer with us um but for me my all-time favorite and when it's on i watch it all the way through i've seen it probably 50 60 times i'm not kidding you um and that's when harry met sally yeah you know and, and the thing is like and I think you had said that to me before that this was your favorite. Uh, this, it, the, the interesting thing about our entire list is that 
we not only don't normally we have like the similar movies in a different order we have zero movies this that in the top 10 except for when harry met sally none of our top 10 is the same not by numbers normally it's like this one's seven this one's eight this one's one this one's three none of them except for that movie made it on both of our lists my number one has not been changed probably well i mean now that i say it someone's gonna fight it but uh let somebody come and try and change this because if you do it'll be a great movie the romance the comedy the essence of what a romantic comedy is the first time i ever heard john legend when he sang the song don't you worry about a thing to every little bit of this movie the trying the trouble with dating the difficulty in dating the difficulty in people thinking you're just like everybody else the fact that a man has to make himself vulnerable that a woman has to make herself vulnerable that anybody out there dating has to drop their walls because maybe just maybe the thing that everybody wants is love whether we admit it or not so i have to give it up to this and i had somebody say this to me and it's one of the greatest lines ever they said in in the famous words of allegra cole i like your lips hitch is my number one has to be great again on so many levels such a funny such a great film um a dual couples also um which was which was awesome so um that definitely would make a make an honorable mention for me because it was um such a great movie and and again anything will smith's in um but uh really really enjoyed that nice that tells me a little bit about yourself yeah we we differ a lot this is where you see usually men and women differ in romantic comedies usually the men go a little bit more comedic and the women go as you can see a little bit more relationshipy um yeah. which is funny but everything <laughs> i've ever seen with men it's the same thing when, when we talk about this category so that is funny we only had one together um where a lot of it we differed in areas so interesting list that was very interesting <laughs> yeah very interesting to show the juxtaposition of of the the male and female thoughts on this stuff and uh to get a top 10 that's almost completely different and you for your favorite to just make my top 10 so very very interesting now let's see if we could be similar or different as we go to a totally different world and we jump into the world of james cagney robert de niro uh, al pacino and Joe Pesci, and so on and so forth, Jack Nicholson, and on and on and on, these movies, Tom Hanks, these movies, uh, you know, Ray Liotta. When it comes to mob and gangster movies, I never knew how easily I could make this list, nor did I realize that maybe 40 of them could be on it. The top 10 mob and gangster movies starts right now. And that's why I'm wearing my Italia shirt. <laughs> now, I have a couple that I didn't put on my list, but I want to give a shout out to. Number one, Pulp Fiction. Even though there's some mob and gangster in it, Hitman, it's such a classic movie. I put it in my drama. So I didn't include Pulp Fiction, but I want to give it a shout out because it is absolutely one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, Donnie Brasco and American Gangster. Just wanted to mention those. Um, just because they're not in my in my top 10 so but yet i love them all right i'm going to start with number 10. here's the crossover to one of the best actors of all time if not the best that can do anything and he never does it wrong and it is one of my favorite movies and again i watch it every time it's on no matter what part it's on i keep it on um and i just love it and i think more so from the father-son relationship and how that blossoms out of tragedy. Um, but my number 10 is Road to Perdition with Tom Hanks. And I love this movie. Um, it was just, it was so good on so many levels. And so um, even not the classic mobster, gang kill, bubba, but the relationship side for a female is what drew me in um, and just loved it. 
Yeah, your number 10 is, is much higher on my list, but it's there. My number 10 is a crossover from comedy to this because it is a mob movie. It is a gangster movie. There are people being thrown out of windows during weddings. And I had to include this and I had to make it number 10 because I understand that it's a comedy, but it is a, it is a true mob movie. There's mob throughout the entire thing. There's not a second without the mob. It's Robert De Niro and Billy Crystal trying to figure out life together and Billy Crystal being the therapist of a mob person. And so it had to make my list because we talked about mob and gangster movies and this is very much shooting, very much mob, very much we don't talk about the family. So it's a tie between the two of them because I couldn't choose either one of them over the other, analyze this and analyze that. Yes, excellent choice. Again, I, I don't think I included it on my list because it, it, was, it was hilarious, there were comedy, but yes, there was mob involved, unbelievable acting. There's your crossover with Billy Crystal as well. That just tells you what great actors they are um, yeah. when you get them going on every, every which way, but really funny stuff, good, and De Niro. Um, again, he, he can do anything, and so. You're a good Jew. That, that's another line I use all the time. Yes. Good choice. <laughs> I like that. My number nine's a tie um, with the same guy. Um, I couldn't choose either or, um, even though I liked one a little bit more than the other. My number nine comes in, number nine with Heat. How can you not with, with Pacino and, and De Niro, even though they were in very few scenes together. Um, yeah. But a great great cat and mouse great movie but then the one that gets a little bit more for me um is carlito's way um absolutely loved it um just the sean penn in it alone <laughs> with his character um i loved it so for me it's a tie with little uh pacino with carlito's way and heat there may be a time where our paths cross my number nine, our paths did cross, Tammy. I also chose Heat. I had to. It made my list. I saw it more recently. I saw it within the past couple of years for the first time. I had bought it. I just never watched it. And I actually saw Aries Spears, or listen to Aries Spears, the comedian, talk about how much he loves it. And he's talking about that scene where it's like, you know, I might have to do this to you. You might have to do this to me. And they're just sitting there in the diner after the car chase and pulling over and all that. So I got to give it up to Heat because that's that's one of the great moments. And you're right. They're very rarely in the movie together. But that scene at the end where Pacino's looking for him and he gets off into the field, like, you know, when Al Pacino and Robert De Niro are in the same movie, I want them both to live. I never want either one of them to die. So a Heat was a good one. And a, and a time where our paths crossed. That, you know, I think what you'll find with us, I think you and I, it's safe to say, the movies that have the iconic phrases that you can use in real life, really in any situation, like a, like that, when our paths cross, that I may have to do something with this. You know, I, I, think, I think that we're going to see that go throughout our list because we appreciate those moments. Yes, yes, we do. Um... Number eight, again, I, I think De Niro and, and Pesci dominate my list. It's just, and Pacino, it's just ridiculous um, how good they are. Um, but number eight, it throws a little woman in there who I have to absolutely love, and she's just a nasty thing in this movie. But my, my number eight comes in with a little bit of Pesci, a little bit of De Niro, and a whole lot of Sharon Stone. Um, my number eight is Casino. Um, which again, I, I just love, I love Pesci alone. Just the way he delivers lines, his little, his little, you know, I'm bigger than I am. And just, you just want to like, dude, you need to get clipped. You need to get killed in every movie you're in. Cause you're just <laughs> such a little ass. Like, yeah. and you deserve yeah. it. And so um, my number eight comes in at uh, Casino. Yeah, you know, and he is, he is a terror. Uh, my number eight comes in with the story. Who could tell the story of Al Capone better than Robert De Niro? I got to go back to an oldie but goodie, a black and white cover, The Untouchables. 
is my number eight. Because why not tell a true story with one of my favorite actors of all time? Well, my number seven, <laughs> <laughs> and I love me some Kevin Costner and Andy Garcia. Um, and Andy, I really like, you know, I saw him in this movie and I'm like, God, that guy's just adore. He's just gorgeous. He's adorable. But my number seven comes in again, the untouchables. I, the, the whole movie, I just love the whole premise. And again, it was a true story. So, um, really, really great. Sean Connery. I mean, come on. Um, some great acting in that movie. So my number seven is the untouchable. Now we're having a lot of crossover here now. <laughs> We are. We're, we're, you're, we're showing our connections with the mob with each other. <laughs> so my number seven, and uh, that is not an admission of guilt to the FBI, CIA, and everyone involved. It is called a joke. I know that in the society we live in today, people do not know sarcasm. That is sarcasm. Number seven for me, you have to say that, Tammy, when there's two tan people on the same show. My number, <laughs> my number seven is a movie that I don't get as much as other people do. Uh, maybe I got to sit with it and spend more time with it, but it's on my list because I couldn't imagine it off my list, but I'm not, I'm not sold on it the way I think so many other people are. This is probably going to be some people's number one or two. My number seven is Scarface. Um, no, I think, uh, I think a lot of people, um, because of the era it was made in it's hard to it when you watch it later if you watched it when you were young the the music the everything about it um and come on white gold was in it the, when you first saw michelle pfeiffer for the first time like um again a lot of people because of when it was filmed it's not their favorite um and so it used to be my favorite when i was younger that shower scene scared the living but Jesus out of me. Um, and, you know, just the way Pacino talked, like, it just, it was just like, when you're young, it's like, oh my God, this movie's incredible. And so I get it. Um, and it is harder uh, as you get older to really appreciate that at that time. And what was going on in Miami, like, it was just so real. Um, so for me, you know, I loved it. It's much farther up on my list. But again, it, to each their own, to each their own. So I can see that why um, it, it's just not your favorite. Um, Cause it had a lot to do with, with drugs. It had a lot to do with a lot of things that weren't necessarily pure gangster or mafia. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. I, I get it. Um, my number six, I have 50 million people texting me. Um, my number six is um, just, some of the best characters. It was my introduction to, to Quentin Tarantino. Um, just a, a great, oh my God, twist at the end and um, great one-liners. Again, just so crazy. And that's why I love Tarantino. My number six is Reservoir Dog. Yeah, no, and, and that was one that, that I didn't put on my list that would have our honorable mention on my list is what Reservoir Dogs. I watched this, you know, later here uh, within the last, I don't know, probably like three, four years, maybe five years. And so I like it. I like I like the colors, you know, Mr. Orange and, and all that, Mr. Pink. Um, so there's a lot to be said about that. Steve Buscemi's in it. Yes. And a lot, lot of great characters. So I can see that being there. Uh, my number six is because I know about the movie but I haven't watched the movie. So I know enough to put it in, but I feel like after I watch it, I want to preface this video by saying after I watch it, it's probably going to go into the top three, if not the top four. And that is something we talked about before. When you get into the car, when you open the door for a girl and you go around and she opens your door, you know you got a real one. A Bronx Tale is going to be my number six. And when I watch it this week, I'll be texting you going, damn, damn <laughs> this is going to be like number one. So, yeah. But I know it's number six because I have to be respectful of the fact that I can't speak on the whole thing. But I'm, 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 I'm very excited about the opportunity. So it's my number six.
I'm like one ahead of you every time. Bronx <laughs> Tale comes in in my top five. Not necessarily because of the gangster or the, again, this is my female side, the relationship um, between C and his father, um, with the girl, with it, 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 it just, I love this movie on so many levels. Um, and I had the biggest crush on him when I was growing up. I just loved this boy, how they, he wore the little, they, they got dressed up, he wore the little fedora. Um, it, it just is such a good movie. Um, and so for me, Bronx Tale, again, classic lines that I use all the time. Would you rather be feared or respected? You know, the working man's a sucker, dad. You're a sucker. <laughs> no. Um, you know, just just some some great classic lines. And that's what really reels me in, that I can, a movie from 20 years ago, I can still recite every line because it hits you somewhere. And so for me, A Bronx Tale just hit me there, and I loved it. My number five is a movie that when I saw who was coming back to the screen for the first time in like 20 years, Joe Pesci, being in this movie with Robert De Niro and one of my favorite comedians, Ray Romano, I had to, had to, had to, had to, had to know all about this movie. Netflix, it is three hours plus. Oh, it is yeah. a Lord of the Rings mob movie, but I will watch it and I will watch it again. It's cracked my top five and shout out to Netflix because I don't know how you brought these guys back and I don't know how much money you, I don't know how many subscriptions you had to sell to make this happen. But the, the Irishman is my fifth because how do I, how do I not enjoy a movie in the car with Joe Pesci and Robert De Niro? I, I agree with you. I loved it. It didn't make my top 10 um, only because, you know, it came later and it was at times it was a little slow for me even though it was great acting and great dialogue written dialogue but again um when i had to pick other movies with these guys in them it for me it just it didn't hit as home but unbelievable um and i agree with you netflix is just ridiculous ridiculous on what they're making happening so um, when this came out, you best believe the first day it came out, I was waiting with popcorn and, and I watched it number one day it came out. So nice. That, that, uh, that, sh that surprised me a little bit. Um, for me, my number four is one of yours that you're like, ah, I just, I like it, but I can't really get into it. But for me, seeing it as young as I saw it and you know, the first time I saw Michelle Pfeiffer and, and I just love Pacino's character in this. The little immigrant that comes from nothing and just becomes the man and just takes over. Um, so for me, number four comes in as Scarface. Um, and again, that shower scene was just, it was classic for me. It was so good. I can appreciate that because I know that I have to Get a little more connected to it, but my number four, I know to a lot of people may be their number one. And it's it's one of my it's one of my, you know, it's the it's the it's the cotton in the mouth. It's the <laughs> So I gotta I gotta I gotta get with it, you know. So I have to show my love to the the one, the only, the insurmountable the the unbelievable the undeniable the incredible the i hope he is in heaven uh, enjoying himself and would love to meet him someday the ever so amazing marlon brando in the original godfather well i'm just one step ahead of you uh <laughs> i agree with you um and godfather one and two it's a tie for me um, okay. are my number three spots. And again, everything about this movie, um, this introduced me. Um, this and Scarface were my introduction to mob movies, uh, gangster movies. I didn't really watch black and white when I was young in the 70s, you know. And so these were my first really watching and learning about the mafia and learning about families and learning about all this. And so for me, those two movies just hold a special place in my heart because 
those are the classics. Those are the ones that you should, you know, before the black and white, you know, Jimmy Cagney and all those guys. For me, this was my introduction. So Godfather has to be in the top three um, of my list. Has to. Even though, you know, I just, there are two other movies that I love more than this. Just because yeah. I identify with them more, um, hit me differently. But that's why Scarface and Godfather. Godfather comes in number three for me. Yeah, you know, and I think to a lot of people, the Godfather movies and Scarface were their introduction to mob movies. My number three is, is your number 10, my heartbreaker. Uh, the Tom Hanks in this movie looks like my dad. He has the hat in the trench coat that my dad has that I used to look at when he would go to work. And so this movie hit home to me because never want to lose my dad. And, you know, you just you appreciate it the rain the 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 chase scene just being in the car is he going to make it wondering the whole time he makes it out of stuff you don't think he will it's a movie that's literally got you on the edge of your seat at all times and it breaks your heart at the end as road to perdition yes and i agree again um just a it just pulls on your heartstrings in a different way than a than a normal gangster movie does or mob movie does. And it's about that that son coming of age and understanding what his father does and how he lost his family and then eventually how he grows to love his father when he didn't have that relationship with him in the beginning. It was his mom. And so great movie, great movie. Um, and I can see why it's up there. Um, I could argue it could be higher for me as well. So um Love that movie, really do. I'm now, wondering if two and if you're two and one or, or my two and one if they're the same. Probably, <laughs> probably so. Now, <laughs> uh, for so many reasons, my number two, like I think it's your number one, but the cast, where it takes place, the characters, the cat and mouse, the everything about this movie, and the mere fact it has Jack Nicholson in it, and I don't think I have any other movies in here that have Jack, who again is one of my favorite actors of, and he can do horror, it doesn't matter. Um, but for me, you know, Alec Baldwin, like every little cameo in this movie is incredible. Everyone has a little piece that it just, the acting is amazing. So from an actress standpoint, when you're watching these guys go together, you're just like, this is, this is incredible. So my number two um, is The Departed. Yeah, and you know, you said cat and mouse. I would, I would play on words and say rat and mouse. Yeah. Well, who's gonna rat first? Yeah, and and the phone call and the phone, the back and forth with the who's on the phone and who are they talking to? <laughs> so many great things about this movie. Anthony Anderson is in this movie. Like, there's so many people that make it in this movie. One of the, I mean, this was like the Avengers movie back then. Probably cost them five billion dollars to make now just to pay for these people. But the departed, you know, is uh, is not my second. Is not my second. You are correct about where I could be going. My number two is a four-hour movie like the Titanic, but very much not like the Titanic for everything that it is. I watched it with my grandmother. The only time I've ever watched it all the way through, I watched it with G Mama, and in her 90s, we sat in her living room, and we watched this movie. And it was like nine o'clock, and then it's ten o'clock, it's eleven. I asked her if she's tired. She said no. I asked her if she wanted to keep watching it as he was cutting up a body and throwing it there and asking for the knife. From the <laughs> and she said no. She laughed at the movie. I, I asked her if it was too much for her. She said, why is it too much for you? My grandmother showed me that she truly is an Italian gangster. And Goodfellas is my number two. And that leads me into my number one. The characters in this movie, their lines, Pesci, there's two scenes that I absolutely love. And I can, we, we act them out all the time. The one is, am I a clown? Am I here to amuse you? And Ray Liotta's laughing that. I use that meme all the time because it's freaking hilarious. And then my second favorite scene is with, with um, Martin Scorsese's mom, plays the mom, Joe Pesci's mom in the movie. Not many people know that. That's an actual painting that she did. The two dogs going one way, this dog's going this way, one dog's going this way. Ha! That, that whole dinner scene with the, the guy in the trunk, and they never told 
why she's acting, they never told her the guys in the trunk that what the scene's about because they wanted her to just be normal. And they said, Martin Scorsese said, lad, if I tell my mom that he's in the, she's gonna act funny. And then, so the whole storyline behind it is these guys are making fun of the guy in the trunk. She has no idea when she's making dinner for these guys and they're talking about the painting. She has no idea what Pesci's talking about. Um, so for me, this movie on so many levels when I watched it, and it's a true story. It's one of the, and I'm from New York, New Jersey area. That bank heist, um, everything about this hit home for me. Um, and so for me, the characters in Goodfellas, De Niro, Ray Liotta, and Pesci, even Paulie, um, I love this movie. I've watched this movie. I got it up in a poster. I have all my favorite movies posterized that I had in my theater room back in Syracuse, that when I did my theater room, I, and this is one of the posters I had to have, because this is one of my, I've watched this movie probably more than Jaws um, and Rocky. <laughs> uh, Goodfellas for me is my number one. Our number nines are the same. Our number six and five, one off of Bronx Tale, one off Godfather, Goodfellas and The Departed one off. This list, a lot more similar. My number one for the fact of Leonardo DiCaprio still mad about it. Anthony Anderson, oh my God. Like, <laughs> you know, every part of it. Jack Nicholson, you never know. And like, where is he going? Whose side is he on? What is he doing? Who is he working for? Is he with the FBI? Is he with the, like, what is he? The Departed has got to be my number one movie. And I never thought that, a, that my number one would not be Italian based, but you know, it, it, the depart you, you can't, you can't overlook the fact that that movie is insanely stacked with the best. It's constantly moving. And even though I know it's going to happen, I will go back and I'll watch it. I'll give myself some time in between and I'll shock myself again. So, I mean, I still get mad. Mark, I mean, Mark Wahlberg's in the, I mean, there's so uh -huh. many people in this movie, Alec Baldwin, like you said, like, it's it's a cast on top of a cast on top of a cast, and somehow it just all works. And the rat on the windowsill, I mean, it's it's just this movie is fantastic, and I I got I have nothing but incredible things to say about it. I'm still really really pissed that Leo didn't get to get what he wanted to do in the movie. It still makes me mad that he didn't get any like vindication and that he wasn't taken care of, but. You never know who, who people are on the phone with. And that's that's the beauty of the movie. Yes, that is the beauty. And it made me hate Matt Damon. I mean, this movie, I despised him. Um, <laughs> just despised him. I went from loving him in Goodwill Hunting and Born. And then I, I saw this and I'm just like, God, I hate this kid. Um, <laughs> this guy. Uh, and I loved Leo. And so it it uh, it definitely was, you know, easily in my top two. Again, I'm very character driven. Um, they pull me in with when I, I can identify with them or assimilate with them. So, um, just, I, I, and I think we, you know, I think we, I think this list was definitely easier. We had a lot of crossover, um, than, than our rom-com list. So. Yeah, we definitely had some fun with this one. Totally different, more of the same. So, you know, it's like, uh, you know, it's, it's just funny. That uh, from a man to a woman and a woman to a man, when it comes to the mob, that's when we link up. Yes. <laughs> so for Tammy Reese, myself, Dance Tour, this is Reese's Pieces. Every other Monday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time, following Wake Up Call on Facebook.com backslash Live Now DT. And the playback as well on YouTube.com backslash Wake Up Call DT and on Wake Up Call DT.com. Tammy, as always, I appreciate it. Thank you for your extended time, and I'll talk to you soon. All right, Dan, be good. You too. See you.